In the chronological survey, um, were to the Greeks who were working with the Greeks have dealt with Homer and, and dealt briefly in mythology and, and uh, Sappho, uh, uh, Aesop. Well, move, basically moving on through time, Greek theater, at a certain point uh, I, I need to deal with Greek theater and I, I can't give you the, the approximate years for that. It's very old. The Greeks are the ones that came up with this idea that you would act act out a story where people would pretend to be people that they were not. There really, I think, in the history of the world, there had been nothing quite like this before. There had been dances, primitive dances, where somebody wears a mask and pretends to be a bear or something. But where, act, so I, I really say it's the presence of actors and maybe actresses that that was new. And the Greeks, of course, they devoted vast resources to this. It was huge in Greek culture. They would carve out the side of a, a hill or a mountain and make it an amphitheater with a sandy area down at the bottom, an arena I think they'd called it, and thousands of people could could witness these. Uh, th this is a little bit more, I think, the, the uh, matter for a, a history teacher to deal with maybe than what I'm dealing with, but but the Greeks it seems to me invented this idea of theater, and it has been so major. Uh, along with this, uh, with these ideas that there are comedies and tragedies, the Greeks uh, had both kinds, they recognized both kinds, they had different purposes. Shakespeare's plays are normally organized into comedies, tragedies, and histories. Uh, um, but uh, anyway, and, and I want to compare it to modern day movies, commercials, and plays. You might think, well, yeah, that's fine for the Greeks, but that's old and long gone. No, 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 not at all. Uh, just think how much time a modern day person spends watching actors or actresses doing their art. Movies, so many television shows, sitcoms. Those, if there are actors there, I say that is, that is theater, that is drama. And the Greeks gave it to us. Even commercials, even commercials, you've got the presence of actors. A major influence. Uh, I mean, this is about classics, and boy, that was classic to come up with the idea that people would pretend to be somebody that they weren't. Uh, you may not go to that many plays, and maybe not, but still, uh, you know, television and, and, and movies have kind of taken over for that. Well, Oedipus Rex is the one, I think it's probably the most famous uh, Greek play that is still uh, appreciated. It's a tragedy, uh, and uh, it's a shocking story. I'm going to run it by you fairly quickly here, uh, but, but here we go. In Oedipus Rex, uh, at the beginning of it, uh, the, the city of Thebes, I, I'm pretty sure that's the city, Thebes, has got a real big problem. There's a, a plague there and it's been there for a number of years and doesn't seem to go away and Oedipus is the king, Rex means king uh, he wants to know what's going on so he calls a wise man uh, in and the wise man says uh, the plague will be there until a curse is lifted from the city and the curse is you uh, yeah I think he tells him that right away and Oedipus, or Oedipus has said well what, what is it, whatever it is we'll get rid of it you just tell me what's the curse, what has to be done and the guy says, it's you. And, and then he goes on to tell this horrible story, really, that Oedipus, as a baby, when his father Laertes, I think was his name, uh, had a son, he was so thrilled to have this little baby boy that he went to the oracle at Delphi and wanted to know what's the future of this little boy. And the oracle at Delphi uh, told him that this baby boy is destined to kill his father and marry his mother. I told you it was going to be shocking. Well, Laertes thought, no, no, that's not going to happen. What, that's, what are you talking about? can't be. It, it, I'll see to it it doesn't happen. So when he goes back, he orders a servant to take the baby, the little baby, and uh, pin his heels together and take him up on a mountainside to die of exposure up there in the mountain. And, and that way he'll die and this is not going to happen. Well, the shepherd uh, is not... It starts to do this, but when it comes down to actually leaving the baby there, he can't bring himself to do it, so he goes over the mountain to the other side 
I'd like to come up with the name of that city, but I'm afraid I'm going to come up with the wrong one. So I, I won't try. And there he finds a shepherd family that will raise this baby boy. He just can't kill the baby boy. <clears throat> now, I don't know if you realize, but here we've got the endangered royal baby theme coming around. Once again, that epic theme. Well, uh, the baby uh, uh, was, uh, was raised there, and well, for a while by the shepherds, and then the king and queen of that other city, uh, uh, I'm tempted to say Syracuse, but I'm afraid I'll get it wrong, they find out the baby's there, they don't have a child, so they adopt the baby and they raise the baby as if it were their own. And the little baby doesn't know anything of this, he thinks that's his real mother and father. So when, the, when young Oedipus becomes a, a young man, he wants to know what his future holds, so he goes to the uh, Oracle of Delphi to find out. And the Oracle of Delphi says, you are fated to, kill, uh, to uh, kill your father and marry your mother. And Oedipus says, no way, that's not going to happen. I'm never going home. I'll never go back. I'll never see my mother and father again. So he doesn't go back to that city that I can't think of. Uh, instead, he wanders. And as he's riding along in his chariot, at a certain point, he, he meets another chariot coming the other way, and there's an old guy on there, and uh, they argue who's going to back up. Neither one of them is going to back up. They get off. Next thing they do, they fight, and he kills the old guy. And then he continues on his way. Well, he uh, eventually comes to the city of Thebes, and there at the, at the gate of Thebes is, is the Sphinx, this monster. And the Sphinx is putting riddles to the... Uh, everyone that comes, and if you can't solve the riddle, you die. If you do solve the riddle, you get to marry the queen of Thebes, who has recently, Jocasta, uh, who has recently been widowed. Uh, well, here's the riddle of the Sphinx. What goes on two legs in the morning, four legs in the morning, three legs in the middle of the day, and one, three legs in the evening? Four, three, uh, four, two, three. And the answer, I, sometimes I'll have kids know, is a human. The four legs is a baby crawling. The two legs is a human for most of his life. And the three legs is an old man with a cane. He solves it. The Sphinx shrivels up and dies. And Oedipus goes in and gets to marry Jocasta, queen of the city. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> that was his mother. And the man he had killed, Laertes, was his father. And when the old wise man tells Oedipus this, he's shocked, he's horrified. He, well, as a matter of fact, he doesn't believe it. He says, what are you talking about? And the old guy says, well, consider your heels. Look at those scars on your heels. And Oedipus means weak foot. You've limped all your life. And they send for some old, the old servant, and he comes and confesses that he, he hadn't killed the baby. That's true. Well, when Oedipus realizes this is true, he rushes to try to get to Jocasta, his wife slash mother. Sorry, this is, I know it's horrible. Uh, kids, kids, when I tell her, they're going, ooh. Uh, but she's heard the news already and she's hanged herself. There she is hanging and it's such a horrible sight that Oedipus gouges his eyes out. He doesn't want to ever see anything again. That's so horrible. And, and then he wanders through life, a blind old man accompanied by one of his three daughters. I think Electra is her name, and, and the story goes on. Well, anyway, uh, Freud, sorry about how horrible that was, but it's famous. Freud, Sigmund Freud, Austrian um, uh, psychoanalyst, uh, I'll tell you more about him later on. When he uh, felt that he had found that there was a human uh, tendency for sons to... Uh, Oh, and by the way, here was the riddle. Uh, there was the riddle game, which I think I told you about. Here's the rebellious son, like like uh, Absalom, uh, who actually kills his father. Uh, that for sons, as they go through under puberty and go through puberty, to not deal well with their fathers at all. And uh, he even, our Freud even argued that they were both in love with their mothers, uh, and most humans go through that fine and they get on the far side and they get along with their fathers fine and it all works out but some can't get past it said Freud I'm not saying this is true but he, he wanted to give this a name and so he called it the Oedipus complex because he went back to that Greek story I had suggested that there was a uh, there maybe should be something called a an Odysseus complex in an early video uh, earlier video and a Persephone complex 
Uh, all right, kind of a horrible story to leave the week on, but, uh, but it's very famous, and uh, you've heard about it now, so uh, I hope to see you on Monday.